Welcome back to Silent Hill 4, The Room. In the last episode, we explored the Ashfield Heights apartment complex. Now that we have the keys that we got from the superintendent's place, we can access all the apartments. We found the creep's place. Creep who was going after Rachel. And within the creep's place, we dialed the number that they had for Rachel, which has caused their phone to go off constantly. It seems to just be being broadcast throughout the entire apartment complex. And I'm not 100% sure where it is, because I'm pretty sure that Rachel and Eileen are the same person, or at least they lived in the same place. So if I had to guess, I would say the phone is probably coming from Eileen's place, but I don't have the key for that place. Rachel maybe lives in a different place? If they do, I don't know where that other apartment is either. So still trying to figure that out. One thing I do want to go over, though, is in the last episode, I was pretty confused about these different scraps of paper that I found, mentioning somebody finding Eileen's key and then trying to return it to the super, and then they couldn't, and then something about a torn message. And I was getting super confused about who the different actors were in that exchange. So I went back, and I looked at exactly where I got all of these different notes, and I just compiled a little kind of checklist here. So, within the superintendent's place, that will, that's where we found these two red notes here. This one here for May 20th. I picked up the key that Eileen from room 303 must have dropped. I thought I'd return it, but she wasn't home. I guess I'll give it to the super. So that was in the superintendent's place, along with this scrap was also there too. I lost the key to Eileen Galvin's room. I've got to find it and bring it back. Let me think. The last place I saw it was... And then I guess the last place they saw it has been ripped off. So those were both within the superintendent's place. Also in the superintendent's place was a white memo not one of those red notes, but just ones that, one that you could read right then and there. That said, found by Nurse Rachel, returned to room 302 together with part torn by Mike. So now looking at those side by side and that they were all found in the same place, I know that that's saying that these two red notes were found by Rachel. Or at least the one note, this one, the May 20th note, was definitely found by Rachel. And the superintendent is saying, return that to room 302, my room, together with part torn by Mike. So somewhere else, I guess, maybe the superintendent found the other piece torn by Mike. How they know it was torn by Mike, I don't know. Yeah, so the part torn by Mike is obviously this scrap. So it sounds like Mike is the one who tore off the part saying where Eileen Galvin's key is. But this is for my place. Am I the person who found Eileen Galvin's key and I just don't remember? Is it the me now? Who doesn't remember, or did this happen like 10 years ago? I don't know what's happening now and what happened in the past, because there's definitely some weird time play going on. But I, I guess for now I'm just going to assume that this is me and I just forgot, since everything seems very hazy. So this gives me two ideas. One is that if I'm the one who lost the key, then maybe I lost it in my own apartment and it's somewhere there. Maybe I kind of know where it is. And the other thing is that Maybe the creep has the other piece of paper, or I need to find the other piece of paper that was torn off by the creep somewhere, even if it's not in their apartment, and then that will tell me where it is. The thing is, though, I already went to the creep's apartment, and as far as I could tell, they didn't have the piece of paper. So, I don't know. But that's what I've got for that. Definitely, it makes that all make a lot more sense to me. Now, where shall we go? We got two more apartments we haven't visited up here on the first floor. Let's go check them out. I think that's where I was exploring before when I was about to die by the dogs and I went back to our apartment to get healed. I'm all healed up now, of course. I've already been in that one, right? 104, yeah. Sounds like a dog moving, but I didn't see one. Ugh. That was very satisfying. Is 
furniture seems to be covered with some kind of animal hair. Give me this real quick. Wait, all the guns here are just models. No. Really? Oh, that's so cool. How does that miss? if I have to put on my necklace to down them enough. Nah, I might have to put on my necklace to weaken them enough to put the thing in. Stab them. Ah, I do. Okay. No, it broke. Looks like there's just nomin on my nipple. Gross. Oh, okay. Alright, maybe you don't necessarily have to use that. Obviously, it makes it a lot quicker, though. I have to down them like three or four times. This is the same one that was attacking me in the other apartments. It's the same one that's chasing me around, coming out of the walls. They look like a, a gardener, groundskeeper or something. They're wearing like overalls or coveralls or whatever they're called. They have a, a, a little hand trail for digging up dirt, gardening. Paper target from a shooting range. All of them are just models. <laughs> oh, that's so cruel. I love it. They give you like every possible weapon that you could possibly want. Shotguns and chainsaws and SMGs and pistols and... Ah. Uh. Wait, was this open? What are these things? They've been in a lot of the apartments. They look like little elevators or bird cages or something. Whoa. Wait, wait, wait. What did that say? Nothing but books about guns, but one of these magazines has something written on the back cover. My eyes and skin are so itchy. That stupid cat next door made my allergy go crazy. I was so pissed off, I took my converted model gun and blasted away at the thing. At point blank range, it was way cool. The thing just dropped like a stone. What the fuck? By the way, that revolver that Richard in 207 carries, it's the real thing. That guy's dangerous. <laughs> As opposed to you? Budding serial killer here. 207, revolver. 207, revolver. Okay, since this does seem to be the same thing that's following me again and again and again, I'm actually going to leave it pinned to the ground. So, 101. 101 is where my sword is. It's not like I need it very often. I'll just leave it there. Let's check out floor 2. I went back to my apartment, by the way, to heal. Oh no, there's another floater here. Hmm. 
I'm well, just gonna have to run past them. Maybe there's one on every floor. So maybe I should go get the other one from floor one and bring it up here. Plenty of cooking tools, but there's nothing I need right now. Super nothing in here. Just gonna try to be fast. Oh, what the hell? Bloodstained shirt. There's a torn red paper in the pockets. A torn red paper, is that the other half? That might be the other half. I hate the way they move. Oh, that's the door out. Um, did I look everywhere? Yeah? I think so. Whoa! Wait! This is the phone! So Rachel is not Eileen. Rachel's in the apartment below me. There's no one there. I mean, I am the one who called. That's really unsettling. You call the number, answer it, there's no one there, and then it's just over. I guess the whole point of it was just to find Rachel's apartment or something, but... Ugh. Makes me think there was supposed to be, like, there might have been someone who would answer. Looks like they were an artist. Painting of two adults and a lot of children. The memo says 206. How can they even sleep with so many noisy kids? Besides that, they have to live next to Braintree. Braintree, that was that asshole who we met who fell down and somehow didn't get hurt at all. And then died by being electrocuted. So do they paint the other tenants? Young man, 107. Yeah, they did portraits of everybody. He listens to great music. Oh yeah, it's the person with all the records. But I feel sorry for him having to live under Braintree. Painting of a man holding a brush. 202. Self-portrait. Wait, 202. Wait, what? I don't understand. 202 is this apartment. Uh, come on. Painting of a man holding a brush. Self-portrait. But I dialed this number from, I think it was 106, the creep's apartment. It said my, like, my love's number, which is Rachel. But if this is a self-portrait, how come this phone went off? But obviously Rachel doesn't live here. I think there might be some time thing going on. I think some of this might be from the past, 10 years ago, when the murders originally happened, and some of it is from now. Like, maybe Rachel used to live here. I don't know. Or maybe Rachel lives here now, and I'm looking at the past. Painting of a nurse. That's gotta be Rachel. 106. 
My beautiful darling, lately she's been bothered by a stalker. Are you sure you're not the stalker? My beautiful darling? Hopefully they don't mean that in a creepy way. 106. That's the apartment that I thought was the creeps apartment. And I thought that because I went in there and I found a nurse's uniform, which I thought was because they stole it from Rachel. I guess it was just Rachel's own uniform there. But I also thought it because there was a phone number, like a memo pad or something that said, like, my love's number. Right? Oh, maybe... Was Rachel and this person in this apartment in a relationship? Um, let's look at what I read in what I thought was the stalker's apartment. Hmm. Actually, yeah, it wasn't actually a thing that I picked up. It just said it right then and there. It was like, my love's number. And then, do you want to dial the numbers? Said something like that. Yeah, I guess I just misinterpreted that. So that wasn't the creep's apartment. Well... Shit, then that means I don't know who the creep's apartment is. I don't think that's grammatically correct. I don't know whose apartment belongs to the creep. Now I'm back to thinking it could be me, but I'm pretty sure not. Or maybe who lived there before. I don't know. Painting of a plump woman. Memo says 204. She's always eating something, but I wish my girlfriend liked to cook like her. Okay. That, um... Yeah. Woman who is fat likes to eat things. The end. It's a good story. It's a good storytelling there. Painting of an old couple. 304. Nice, sweet old couple. 304. Oh, right. I haven't really been up there very much. Uh, 304 must be this down here. Painting of a woman holding a cat. 102. She loves cats too much and missed her chance to get married. Are you serious? You know, a lot of the time I think this game is really clever and interesting and and smart and really carefully considered. Kind of felt sorry for her while she was mourning for one of her dead cats. Sometimes I feel that way. Most of the time I feel that way. But then you just come to a place like this and it's just like they lost all subtlety and just blabbed out a bunch of garbage. Fat woman who is fat. Woman who loves her cats too much. Oh, she should have got married. Crazy cat lady. Ha ha ha. This is garbage. What the hell were they thinking? I wonder if there's one for me. Painting of a man drinking alcohol. 203. He's so noisy. I wish he would stop all that drinking and fighting. Nothing painted yet on this one. Painting of a man with a gun. 101. A gun maniac. He's always coughing from his cat allergy. Oh, right. The one with all the model guns. This must be the superintendent. 105. Sunderland, the superintendent. The super mistakenly thought that Mike was Rachel's lover. Yeah, I remember they said that in their note. They thought maybe they were their boyfriend. Painting of a man holding a porno magazine. 301. That perverted stalker, he got what he deserved. So the porno mag person is the stalker. This must be Richard Braintree, 207. Braintree, that prick, he's always yelling at kids, especially that weird one that hangs around. But he took Mike into his apartment and peeled his skin off. So he's my hero. That's... That's what happened? Uh... Got what he deserved. Pe peeled his... Pe literally? Uh, 
Uh, I'm glad that the stalker was dealt with. I don't know if... I don't know if peeling his skin off was necessary, though. That sounds like Braintree really, really enjoyed it or something. Also, how does Rachel know this about everybody? They seem to know who everybody is. Like, to a really deep degree. Every single person in the entire apartment building? They know, like, they're their secrets? I don't know if they're secrets, but I mean, alcoholic and... I don't know, they just know so much about everybody. I guess they could figure this stuff out if they just, I don't know, interviewed everybody and said, hey, can I paint you for a portrait? I guess it's not that private kind of stuff. Must be the guy who plays video games. 205. He's always shut in his room. Looks like he has lots of weird interests. I heard his tape... He tape recorded Mike getting beaten up by Richard. Okay. Why? What? What the hell's wrong with his apartment? I... <sighs> I'm at a loss for words. That's it for that. Let's go to 201. I forgot who 201's apartment is for. Actually, I want to... Ah, it's fine. I don't need to link it with the painting. It's fine. It's interesting that they left me alone in that person's apartment 202. I guess it's because there were so many things to look at they didn't want you to be bothered. I don't think that's going to happen in this apartment, though. Also missing interior walls. Writing is all blurry. I can't read it. Yeah. Is there nothing in here at all? Yeah, there's nothing. voices when I come over here. I think I heard them on the way through when I first came here, too. Maybe it's just when you're near those zombie things. Alright, let's check the other side. I'm especially interested in 207, the murder apartment. Four, five, six... No, four, five, six, seven. So seven would be this one up here, the very last one. Barbell. Oh, is this the video game person? Yeah. So this is the, one, the person who should have a recording of Mike getting beaten up? Do they also record the skin peeling part? Lots of old game machines and other devices that I have no idea about. Books about computers and electronics. That's a lot of books. A lot of old video game machines lying around. It's a cassette tape. The label says, Skinned Mike. Doesn't sound like just beating up. Yeah, it sounds like they got the skinning. I could listen to it on the stereo in my room. Oh, yay.
That's really not a thing? Okay. Looks like a memo pad or something. Alright. Oh, dogs. Ah! Ooh! I sprinted. Shouldn't have sprinted. I think I hear a dog in here. It's a baby bed. A baby bed. A baby bed? Yeah, looks like that is a name for it. I've never heard that used before. According to Thosaurus.com, another name for baby bed or crib is Moses Basket. Lots of kids' toys lying around. Okay. I'm sorry, doggy. It's too small of an environment. I can't avoid you. There's another one. this camera. Yeah, they did. Wow, they had a lot of kids. In such a small space. Stacking them up. Was very powerful. I think it's the first time that attack has ever actually hit. And there's nothing in here. Wait. Looks like a kid's graffiti. The writing is so jammed together it makes me feel sick. I thought that looked like writing. They let the kids write over every inch of every wall and floor? No, that's... I don't think so. That's something else, I think. I think that's Silent Hill's work. Even though we're not in Silent Hill, but I mean, you know, its influence is obviously here. Oh. Yeah. Alright, this is the person who skinned Mike, and there's blood all over the place, and they should have a revolver. Whoa. Hi. Uh. Let's do a save state. I see the revolver on the chair, and that's, uh, Walter Sullivan, I think. The person who was born in my room 30 years ago. There's men's bloody underwear and a torn shirt sleeve in the garbage. Um, yeah. Take Richard's revolver. Yes. Holds a maximum of six bullets, easy to use with moderate stopping power. Now that doesn't use the same type of ammo as the pistol, right? It wouldn't make any sense for it to. Whoa. Just disappeared like a ghost. They disappeared in the same way that the little kid version of them disappeared at that door. Remember they were knocking on that door? I think it was my door back when I first came to this place. I went to go next to them and then they just disappeared. You know how they've been looking through my people just staring at me on the outside while I'm on the inside? And then the little kid version knocking on the door. It's like they're trying to go back to the place where they were born. Because they were literally born in my room. Oh no. 
I can see Eileen Galvin from here. I'm pretty sure that's room 303. What's she doing in this in this world? Uh anymore. Is that a golf club? Oh, I think it's a putter or something. No. I can't drop anything, but you know what I can do? Oh yeah. Looks like a putter. Is that a little tea set? That, that's a teapot right there. And a little tea glass, too. A dainty tea glass. Along with... Is that a car battery? I think that's a car battery on the table. So Richard liked to drink tea and peel people's skin off. And maybe electrocute them. Okay, got it. I think I need to head back to my apartment to heal and listen to that tape. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, we're going to listen to that tape of Mike being skinned. <laughs>